everyone, welcome back to the VR Oxygen channel. I really missed our video blog, so glad to be back. I'm Nina, and today we have a very special episode. I'll share with you some documents we created while playing your beautiful VR games and while working on some of our VR experiences. So it's called VR Experience Heuristic Evaluation. It's all based on our observations and findings on our research and tests with real users. And of course, on some other resources. So we just collected all the information together since we've accumulated really a lot of it. And I thought, why don't I share it with you? Because I think it can be really useful. It's a four pages document and uh, you can check under the video. I put there the link where you can download it. Yeah, first of all, uh, what is heuristic evaluation? It's a usability studies method to identify problems. Of course, this list doesn't replace the usability studies with real users. So it's really important that you test it not only with yourself and your team, but also with the users from your target audience, because only then you will know if it really works as intended or not. I like to go over this checklist when I'm going to test the experience on real users, for example, and I just go over each point to make sure that I didn't forget anything that I considered all the details. So I just, I think it's convenient to have this list. Let's go over some of the points here. There are some of the criteria to consider when designing for VR. The heuristics list is sorted in several categories, and the first one is called navigation. Let's read some. And by the way, let me know if anything is unclear. So let's see. UI elements are located in a comfortable proximity from each other and from the player. So it means not too close, not too far. The player doesn't get any eye strains to trying to focus on it, etc. The reticle is rendered stereoscopically and projects spatially onto targeted objects. So the reticle should look like it's from the same dimension, not that uh, your world is in 3D and reticle is in 2D. That definitely is not the best solution. The second category is called comfort. Let's see what's here. Motion has a constant velocity without acceleration deceleration. Well, I think it's clear that acceleration causes sickness, motion sickness. Brightness is always adjusted for the comfortable viewing. By the way, it's really important to pay attention to it because I very often see games and experiences that have so bright colors or lights that hurt eyes. Parallax is natural and comfortable. By the way, it's interesting uh, point because I saw it several times that the horizontal parallax is natural and uh, yeah, it feels good, but the vertical one feels a little strange. It feels like I'm jumping, not just looking up. Mismatches between physical and visual motion cues are avoided. It means that it's important to give the player the reason why they are moving. For example, maybe they are sitting inside of a car or maybe they're riding a bicycle or something else. Let's see the next one. Frequent eye refocus changes between different items and various depths are avoided. By the way, I wasn't sure if it's written uh, grammatically correct, so let me know if, you, if it's hard to understand. So I will explain. It means that it's better to avoid situations when the player has to constantly focus on objects that are located at different at different depths. Let's see some more. Yeah, comfort is a really important category. Environmental discomfort is avoided, unless it's intended by the specificity of an app. Well, that means that it's not good to put your player in a situation when they will feel uncomfortable. For example, too small room, it may cause claustrophobia, or put the player somewhere on the top of a mountain, or something like this, you know, where it can be really uncomfortable. Let's see next. In app interactions, consider ergonomics. That means that avoid such situations when the player 
has all the time looked down because it may cause the next train. You know, it's also called uh, it's also called text neck. And let's see one more. The user has a personal space. It's really important because it may be very intimidating if something or somebody in VR comes too close to the player. The player would naturally try to go back or remove the headset, so it, it would be really uncomfortable. Let's go to the next category. It's called performance. So here, of course, no frame drops, the head tracking is always on and constant, no API calls causing a pop-up during the VR experience. The next category is 3D elements and environment. Let's see what's interesting, what's the most interesting here. The VR experience has no visual clutter. Try to keep it simple in VR because the virtual reality itself is already kind of distracting for people, so make everything easy for them and comfortable and pleasant. An important one is audio. The audio is spatial, 360 or omnidirectional. Audio really helps with immersion. The VR experience has the minimal amount of text or no text. To be honest, it's better to avoid any text in VR for now. But if you need to use, try to use it sparingly. Another point about text is that text in VR should be readable from any possible position. Not only from the position you assume the user would be, but from any possible position. It's really important. Remember that users can decide where they want to go. One more category is control. The most interesting here, I think, is that the user always controls all the movements. It really helps to prevent any discomfort and motion sickness. And also the good one is that it would be good to have an option to bypass some content, if applicable, of course. The next category is feedback. The user always receives a timely and clear feedback from interactions. The feedback from real reality into virtual reality is supported. Well, it's preferred, of course, but I think it's not always possible to implement. So the next one is functionality. The most important here is that there is a smooth transition between virtual reality and real reality. And the last category is consistency. UI and interactions are consistent and easily recognized rather than recalled. So you're welcome to download this document from our website, the link is below. And I think that's it for today, we went through the most important points of our VR heuristic evaluation document. I hope it will help to make VR even better. And again, our VR heuristic evaluation is uh, our very first iteration and we will work on it more along the way and we'll change it, we'll try to keep the updated document um, in the, on our website, so you will always be able to find the new version there. And thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked our today's usability talk. Put the likes and subscribe if you did. And of course, don't forget to share this episode with people who work on VR and with everyone who wants to start learning VR. Have a great time in VR and building VR. Bye.